Hey, welcome back to the Engineer Channel. Today we're out in uh, the middle of nowhere. We're in Mexico, and uh, I'm with my best buddy Steve over here. Say, ha say habla espanol. <laughs> and Steve, we, we go way, way back. 20, we've been friends over 25 years. Did you know that? Yep. Over 25 years. Yep. And he's one of the best engineer fabricator people I know, and he has made the nuttiest thing you've ever seen. You got to see this. Come on back, and we'll show you all about it. Steve has built a twin pulse jet powered bicycle. What does this run on? Gasoline. It runs on regular, just uh, uh, low octane pump gas. Because that doesn't seem very flammable. Uh, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the options for this were what? Just uh, propane or um, natural gas, I guess. So some propane, most of them run on, right? A lot of them on propane. Uh, a lot of people mix uh, uh, gasoline and diesel or kerosene. Um, to run these. So why well. would you choose gasoline over something like propane? Is it just fuel density or? Uh, it, it easier, uh, a little cheaper, uh, easier to package. You know, you've got a, uh, um, a nice fuel tank here instead of uh, uh, some big, you know, uh, pressure vessel that you got to put, that you got to put somewhere. So uh, just a, a cleaner installation. Okay, so how does this thing work? Tell me how it works. All right, so uh, uh, it's really simple. And so uh, uh, a pulse jet engine is uh, literally a, uh, a jet engine that you could build in your garage. Um, and, uh, and, and it operates on something called the uh, Lenore cycle, uh, th thermodynamic, thermodynamic cycle called the Lenore cycle. Um, and uh, so you've got uh, um, a, uh, essentially an empty can. There's, there's uh, no, uh, nothing in, uh, internal here. Um, th this is the heat shield actually on the outside. But underneath is the uh, the body of the the motor itself, and it's just a tube, just an, uh, just an empty can. This, this is uh, these are called reed valves. They're just simply uh, uh, thin metal steel, um, blue tempered spring steel plates, and uh, um, and they're just uh, opening and, and closing under their own uh, tension, just due to uh, uh, pressure differential. Um, and so uh, the way this works, and uh, the way we start this thing, is uh, by blowing in some uh, some air, and for my uh, leaf blower contraption I've got here. Um, so we, we're blowing in air, then we turn on the spark. We got spark plugs back, back up underneath here. Um, and, uh, and then introduce the fuel. And so, you know, gas is in the tank here, it comes down through a uh, shutoff valve. It's filtered, you know, got a uh, 80 PSI inline uh, high pressure um, uh, automotive pump here. And, uh, and then combining the two pumps, uh, the output from the two pumps together, splitting them back apart. And this is simply a uh, solenoid valve. It's just to keep the fuel from uh, uh, siphoning out and, ru and running out. Uh, so valve comes on and uh, fuel is pumped in under high pressure, 80 PSI, like I said, to a, uh, a oil burner nozzle on the inside. And so gas gets sprayed in. And so what happens is uh, once the uh, stoichiometric mixture is reached, which happens you know, in an instant, um, you get a uh, you get deflagration, which is like a, a, it's like a low velocity ex, uh, explosion um, deflagration there, and uh, and so and that that results in expansion, uh, and so high pressure inside, relatively high pressure, which closes the valves, and you get ex expansion of the uh, of the uh, exhaust gas back back out of the back of the tube, um, and uh, which results in some thrust, about 50, 50 psi pounds per square inch of thrust. But it overexpands, and it uh, it does something which is named the uh, the cadency effect. Um, and so, as this slug, the mass of this gas goes out, um, it causes, and, and since these are closed, it causes a relatively low pressure to be produced in here, a slight vacuum. And so, what happens then is uh, uh, the uh, that that vacuum is overcome by atmospheric pressure out here, and also the uh, the pressure of the gas going out the back, and uh, and so more. And so the valves crack open, fresh air comes in, and, and also the, uh, uh, the slug, the tail end of this hot plug of gas that's coming out the back, uh, comes back in. In the meantime, the, f the fuel is always spraying, all, um, always being introduced. And, uh, and so you get a second, uh, an, an, another ignition event. It's kind of interesting because once, uh, once you start this thing with the first spark, it's self-sustaining. It's lit by the, the last combustion event. And all that happens, um, about a little over 100 times a second in a uh, in an engine this size, it's a function. It's a 
it resonates. And so the, uh, uh, the frequency it runs is a function of the length of the tailpipe there. There's a, there's several of these on the internet where they've run a single engine. What in the world would cause you to put two of these on? Uh, so, uh, I ori <laughs> originally was uh, thinking about just, you know, making one engine and, uh, slinging it on one, in, on one side of the bike. But, uh, uh, this is, of course, kind of way out there and uh, extreme, and so uh, why not two? One's been done before. Let's do two. Let's do two. That's right. That's right. <laughs> a, uh, okay. Yeah. Show me the. Show me your controls. What 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 do you have up on the handlebars? I mean, what are the controls here? So you really, got? really simple controls. And so the uh, um, so the the fuel pumps uh, are powered by uh, this battery. We've got a little uh, absorbent glass mat uh, Odyssey Odyssey battery, nice and compact and. Uh, high energy density as far as batteries go, chemical batteries go. Um, so inside the uh, enclosure here, we've got a, an electronic speed control, um, a uh, um, voltage meter. So just to, just to give us an idea of how many volts. This is just the charge port. Uh, this is the override switch. So this, this lets us run the pumps without having the, uh, uh, the safety switch on the, uh, on the control, on, on the uh, handlebars tripped. Um, and so back up on the, uh, the bars here, so we've got a rheostat that controls the, uh, uh, the electronic speed controller, which controls the, uh, the rate and therefore the pressure of the pumps on the right side. And so that's on and then uh, higher and higher throttle, more and more fuel. And it will, it is throttleable over a, a fairly narrow range, but it does, uh, it does increase the thrust. It's interesting though, it doesn't run, it not like a regular internal combustion engine, uh, increasing the throttle increases the RPM or the, the rate of combustion. That doesn't change. That stays that stays uh, pretty much the same at uh, around 100 hertz. But you're increasing the amplitude by by uh, adding fuel to it. Over on the left side, I've got a uh, spring-loaded switch. Um, so that's a safety switch, and so uh, the pumps will only run with that depressed. And if something goes wrong, I just have to release it, and it kills the pumps. It's a dead man then. It's a dead man switch. That's right. So. And then just simply a uh, on the bars here a vent for the a vent for the tank. And then we have <laughs> we do have brakes. We have brakes. Fr yes. Front and rear, or just front and rear. Front and yeah. rear disc yeah. brakes, but bicycle caliper mechanical me caliper bicycle, brakes. Bicycle components. That's right. All yeah. right. And how much how much fuel will this hold? This is uh, three gallons of fuel. And uh, that probably run you what a hundred miles? Uh, no. <laughs> 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 so uh, the. Uh, so there's pros, pros and cons to pulse jet engines. One big con is uh, they have a, a horribly high uh, thrust specific fuel consumption. Um, and so these three, three gallons uh, by, by rough estimates, running both engines will last five minutes at best. So and pretty so, much just pour it um, out and, and light exactly, it on fire. And that's exactly, how long it exactly. burns. <laughs> yeah, pulse jet engines burn a lot of fuel, make a lot of noise, make a tremendous amount of heat, happen to make just a little thrust. So they, uh, the uh, efficiency of an internal combustion engine is uh, proportional to its compression ratio. And so like a typical car engine, uh, uh, street, your Toyota Camry or whatever, 10 to one compression ratio. Diesel is twice that, 20 to one. Um, and efficiency goes up as compression, in, in general, as compression ratio goes up. Uh, these are making about 1.2 to one. So just, just <laughs> a little, no, nothing, there's nothing mechanical that's uh, compressing the air fuel charge. It's all just a slug of air going back and forth. So horribly, horribly inefficient. But on this channel, we've already determined that no one should be driving a Camry anyway. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> That's right. That's All right. right. So one of the things you're going to lose on on, on YouTube on online is you're going to lose lose the uh, amount of sound that this thing is going to make. It is going to it, shake the earth. It, it does. It, uh, uh, it it's so loud, uh, and you really have to you have to experience it in person to uh, to fully to fully comprehend it. So uh, I've heard people uh, describe it as uh, being in an earthquake. Uh, another name for a pulse jet engine is the perfect human ear destroyer. It, it's uh, it's amazing how loud it is. It's just, just, uh, all right, so the plan is we're gonna we're gonna try and light this off. You haven't run both engines before. I've not run both engines before, and so we're gonna. Uh, I've just statically run one engine, um, and so we're gonna start off by. Uh, uh, we've got a test plan here. We're gonna start off and uh, just run one engine, see how that goes, and uh, if everything's everything holds up well and everything, then we're gonna graduate to uh, the um, to two engines. To light them both. Two. All right, all right. So let's just uh, let's see if we can get her going. Sounds good. You know, all these engineering students, they're asking, hey, what do you real engineers do on the weekend? Huh. <laughs> yeah. Crazy stuff.
So is this the original back frame or have you stretched it? It's the original frame. It's a beach stretch cruiser. Okay. So it's the finest Chinese, uh, Chinese quality money can buy. Chinese special, huh? Yeah, yeah, they all are. So I just uh, stripped it down, had it sandblasted so I could do all the fabrication work. And uh, then when it's done and after we finally prove it out that it works and everything, that everything where it needs to be, uh, then I'll uh, take it apart and powder coat it and reassemble it. So. came around you I was, I was behind you going 48 and i had to go 55 to get around you really wow wow and it was it was squirrely i yeah. was like that's too fast yeah. too fast <laughs> <laughs> it works holy it's cow <laughs> <laughs> okay that's one engine burning one engine you could feel the thrust when it came on yeah i mean it really kind of uh -huh. lurched uh -huh. you forward yeah it builds it builds it builds and builds it it uh uh, yeah, it accelerates slow at first, but faster and faster and faster. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that I think you were at the limit of what that little bicycle's capable of. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. It was really squirrely. Okay, I was coming around you to say, hey, okay, so that's enough. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what now? Uh, that's what these that's what these are for to get get back to uh, Okay, all right. Make Pe another make another run. Pedal home. Yep. And then you want to run too. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, okay. We'll uh, see what we can do here. All right, we'll let's go back try. down there. Okay. <laughs> you made it about a, a mi almost a mile. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay.
Does this thing have a name? That's up to Alicia. Alicia's supposed to name it. Alicia's supposed to name it? Still working on it. <laughs> well, let the, I bet the students will name it something. <laughs> Okay, anything you want to say in conclusion? Uh, so, yeah, so need to uh, replace the fuel pump, crack fuel pump, um, and also need to come up with a more reliable spark source, something that's, uh, uh, you know, on board, wired in, and uh, powered by the main, the main battery. Yeah. So that it'll last longer and a hotter spark. So stay tuned for the next episode where we light them both, stay right? Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Yes, for sure. <laughs> we'll do it. All right. Cool. So there you go. Danger ride out in the country. Thanks for joining us. And I'll see you next time here on the Engineer Channel.